This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. At the time of me recording this, it is so windy here. So if you hear rattling or anything in the background, it's the wind. The wind gods are angry for some reason. I don't know. We've had ferocious wind on and off. Last week we had it too, and this week it's been craziness. I don't know what's going on, but I'm grateful that I have indoor shelter and that I'm safe. But I wanted to mention that up front. Also, I have been seeing this little adorable cat on my security cameras at night. And I'm assuming it's a feral cat, but I'm such an animal person that I actually get excited to wake up in the morning and look on the cameras and see if the cat came back. Now, here in Colorado, we don't have a lot of stray animals because the wildlife will eat them. We have foxes and coyotes. So I was worried with the wind that the little cat might get blown away, even though if it's a feral cat, I'm sure you know it's got shelter. It's smart. It's been doing this a long time. It's not a kitten. It's a full grown cat. But it's so funny because I tried to put food out for it. I know I'm not supposed to do that. I know it's a bad idea. <laughs> but I used to feed my feral cats in San Antonio. And of course, I'd put the food out and then I would look outside and there would be possums and raccoons and everything else eating the food. But we had snowy weather and I noticed a pattern of this cat where it will go into my neighbor's yard and go underneath their deck. So I think that it's a feral cat who's sleeping or living underneath their deck, which I'm not going to tell them because I don't want them to cover up that hole (laughs) because I want the cat to go over there and have a place to stay. In fact, I love animals so much. I looked to see if there was a hole in my deck that maybe they could go under my deck, (laughs) but there isn't, and I'm not going to create one. So anyway, I put the food out and then I looked on the cameras and I saw a raccoon. I saw a possum. I saw a deer. Then I saw a fox. And then two days later, the cat shows up. Now, of course I didn't leave the food. I put a little bit out. So the food probably was there. Maybe one day got eaten and then they probably were smelling it. Oh my goodness. And so then I see the cat and I'm like, what the heck, man? It's gone now. <laughs> and I'm not going to put it out again because we got this newsletter in the mail and I'm sure it's a quarterly newsletter. But one of the tips in there was saying, in order to keep the foxes out of your yard, do not put food of any kind out. And I'm like, uh, o- oops, <laughs> too late. One and done. I'm not going to do it again. But anyway, little things like that give me joy because I just love animals. Now, of course, I couldn't have another one because my cat is a single cat. It's an only cat. It doesn't realize it's a cat (laughs) because I've had her since she was five weeks old. And she's just not been around other animals. So I'm not going to do that to her. But in any case, the wind hopefully will settle down and we can move on and enjoy spring But I said all of that to say, this is a topic I've been avoiding, but it keeps coming up. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. And that is, how do you know when it's time to leave? Now, this can spill over into several areas of life, of course. But the one that's coming up over and over and over and over is relationships. People are starting to realize that as they are vibrating higher and they are aligning with what's next for them, relationships that once served them are not serving them anymore. And I want to share a little bit about my experience with this because this can be such a hard thing for people who are codependent, which most people who think they're empathic, they're actually codependent. They could be both, but typically it is a, we're we're compassionate people. And here's the problem when you're super empathic or codependent or you're clairvoyant or you're on this path we tend to look at the good in people and ignore everything else. It isn't always a bad thing, but when you are just being drugged through the mud and you're just focusing on that one little shimmer of light in a person, it is no longer healthy. And we all have the tendency to do this. Honestly, we really do. On on one scale or another, I'm not saying it's all full-blown. We all have different variations, and it can occur at different steps in our journey. So I know that, and I've shared before that, you know, up until really my 30s, I just aligned with 
toxic relationships that just were not in my highest good because I didn't have self-esteem. I didn't really build my self-esteem till I was in my 30s, if I'm being honest with you. And I went a crash course. I did it really quickly. I worked on it. I mean, I was all in. You know, after my my daughter's father and I split, after I left him, I spent 10 years being single. I dated. But when I was dating in San Antonio, here's the thing. Once I tuned into my intuition, when I would meet someone... I would know instantly whether or not it was going to be a long-term relationship. I have boy, I hear voices, not in lock me up type of thing. My intuition comes in audibly, audibly and physically for me. Everyone has different ways that they experience their intuition. Some people will just say it's a gut instinct, but because I am clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, I have all of the gifts. I get it in multiple ways, which is beautiful because it validates what it is that I'm feeling or sensing or seeing or smelling. So I get it in the smells too. Um, It's kind of bizarre, but we all have our different ways of knowing. So I will say I would meet someone and hear an instant, no, this is an internal, my inner higher self speaking to me. No, that's not it. That happened for every single person that I met up until the relationship that brought me to Colorado. That is the only relationship that I had ever entered into that I did not hear an immediate no. And I am going to do a podcast about that later. Not about the relationship, but about how your intuition can lead you into things that may not turn out the way you thought they were, but it turned out the way it was supposed to because your intuition led you there. So here's what happens. And I want to talk about this because in my private sessions, It's coming up like you wouldn't believe almost every single client here lately is dealing with this in in, in a big way because right now everything's in a big way on the planet because of the shifting. So what happens is, is that we'll hear that initial no, but then we'll say, ah, you know, we're, I'm just kind of being hard about that or I'm, I'm being too picky or we do all those things that we do to justify or invalidate our intuition because a lot of times our intuition is not logical. And that's the thing about it's an inner knowingness. You don't know how you know. You don't know how you know. You just know it. And you don't need to explain it because honestly, that is our at birth operating system. That is our GPS. But, you know, we've been accustomed and taught and programmed to move away from it. So we've got to recalibrate and go back to it. So then once you're in it and now your emotions are connected and you've got soul ties and all this other stuff, now you're you can't really decipher very well. It's difficult because now you get entangled and the relationship you're enmeshed and you know, your aura is dirty. It happens. It happens to everyone. So the key really is when you're trying to determine, is this relationship working anymore is to get yourself clean and clear enough so that you can hear your intuition and sharpen those skills again. And that is really the struggle for people who are empathic and on this path. So what's interesting, and I'm just referring to this last relationship that I left, the one that brought me to Colorado is, so that relationship started off really clean and I had everyone check all the checks and balances, everything checked, everything was good, zero red flags, nothing until I got settled into it and locked in, you know, in a commitment, in a contract. And, you know, (laughs) and so then after that happened, Oh my goodness. It was a, it was, it was a sliding downhill of epic proportion. It was terrible. It was terrible. And I, being who I am in the astrology world, you know, I used to work with an astrologer and she would say that my chart is the try hard chart. That's what she would call it. Oh, Susan, you have the try hard chart. You're the person that will try harder than anyone else. And you will just try something. I mean, I will, push the wheelbarrow with the wheels off. I mean, the thing is like digging into the dirt. I'm going into the sand. I'm still pushing it. I'm still trying. And it gets to a point where it has to be absolutely unbearably awful in order for me to leave. Now I'll say that's Susan in the past. Susan's healed. She's gotten better since then. (laughs) But I'm, I just want to tell you that if that is you, I understand. And the problem is, is that we're such loving and open and light-filled beings that we can overlook a lot of the things that we shouldn't overlook in partnership. 
we really shouldn't overlook it because what happens is, is that we overgive and we're depleted. We're the light and the relationship and the other person is just sucking us dry. That's not always the case, but it oftentimes is. And so in this particular situation, I'll tell you what happened with me and I could give you a million examples, but I'm just giving the last one is the relationship was so incredibly unfulfilling for me. And so not a bad guy, just not my guy. And I started getting messages, I guess it was about a year in that this probably isn't going to work out because this person doesn't want to do any type of work. So this person didn't want to do therapy. They didn't want to do healing work. They didn't want to, to do their deep inner work to show up as a healed version. But see, for me, I was still doing all the work that I'm doing now. I was still doing all the healing work. I'm still keeping myself clean. I'm still raising my daughter. I'm doing everything. And so that didn't stop for me. So what I recognize is that this person said that they were a growth-minded individual, but they actually weren't. Now, on the flip side of that, maybe there was something about me, which probably is true, that brought out the worst side of that person because here's the other part of that. When you are in the light and you're with someone that's in the dark, your light illuminates things that they don't want to see. They don't want to see those things. So it's agitating. So if you are just not willing to engage in things that just don't feed you or that are low vibrational and you're just standing in your light, standing in your truth, people that want to do those things will be very agitated by you. So that's also something that often happens. And it really isn't a judgment. It's a vibrational difference because some people would consider the work that you and I do and the path that we're on to be incredibly boring. So the first thing is, are you, have you done all you can do to try to shift the relationship? Are you doing work that the other person is not willing to do? Because you cannot, you, you can't row the boat with just one person rowing. I mean, you might get there eventually, but that person is going to be absolutely exhausted. So you've got to look at, you know, are the boundaries healthy? Is the person respectful? Does the person listen? And this is both sided. I mean, because listen, I can be incredibly distant in a relationship. What happens with me? So in this particular relationship, see, I have a secure attachment style. And if you don't know about attachment styles, you can look them up, do your research. But this person had an anxious attachment style. So the insecurities in this person and a good, again, not a bad person, but just not my person because for someone to be insecure and jealous, I can't do that. I just can't do it because I am by nature, not a insecure or jealous type of person. Now, those qualities can exist at any given time. I'm not saying that they'll never come up for you. But I mean, this person was like one of those people that was constantly thinking I was looking at someone else, didn't want me having male friends, you know, that ridiculousness, that level of insecurity that breeds control. And the thing about me is that you won't control me because I'll still do it. (laughs) I'm an air sign. I'm very, very stubborn in that way because I can see and I'm going to stand in my truth. And if you don't like my truth, then I'm just not going to talk to you. And that's what happens with me is then I will get avoidant. So he's anxious. I'm avoidant. I would go in from secure to avoidant, but I realized I was partnered with someone that wasn't safe to share with. And we all have things in relationship we have to work through. Relationships are beautiful healing platforms for us. That's how we heal. We don't know our triggers until we get into relationship. So... This isn't for you to say, start beating yourself up for your own triggers or how you don't show up and do show up. Because a lot of times, if you've tried to share, if you've tried to do the work and you're trying and you're trying now, I mean, I tried like, again, I have the try hard chart for three years and nothing. So it had to get really bad for me to say enough, I'm done with this. And for me, I can compartmentalize. I know There's all these varying things. Oh, you can't compartmentalize. Susan, I was in the military. I know how to compartmentalize. I'm really good at it. And that's one of the things that agitated him about me because he was emotionally driven. So I'm an Aquarius. So we're air sign. We're logical. And he was a cancer. So very emotionally driven. Those two things are oil and water. (laughs) <laughs> so while he's just operating in emotion and blow ups and I'm s- sitting there logically like, I, I, I think you're insane. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying those things, but I'm thinking it to myself. And again, I really tried hard to work through those things, but I was trying by myself. 
And so here's what happened. When you won't make a move or you won't speak your truth, your body is keeping score. There's a great book called The Body Says No. It's on audiobook and you can buy it on Kindle and hardback and all that other stuff. But what happened for me is my body started getting, it wasn't getting sick because again, all the other areas of my life were flourishing. It was just this one. And the problem was, is I started noticing because, um, I would give him a healing crisis, not on purpose, but I was doing so many healing classes and clinics that I would be feeling all blessed out. And then as soon as he would come around, he would blow up on me. And, um, and I'm not saying like screaming or hitting or anything like that, but just to have like an emotional meltdown and always in a bad mood and never feeling well. And I realized my energy, my vibration is entirely too clean and too high for this. And that's not, that is not a brag. It really is not. But when you're on this path, in order to stay on this path, you have to keep doing those up leveling because the more that you do, the more the universe gives you. And that's the path that I was on. He wasn't a spiritual guy. He wasn't. In fact, guys, he even claimed to be an atheist after we split, which was shocking to me. Shocking. Um, And so, but again, all these things were masked in the beginning. So, so I'm like, okay, well, let me see if we can work this out. So I would try all the communication skills and I realized he wasn't a safe person to share with. He's one of those people that would take the information that I would share and then hold it for two months and then twist it and turn it and then blow it up later. You know the type. And I'm not dogging the guy out because again, he has a great heart. He would not harm a fly. You know, he had great work ethic. Um, Heart of gold, seriously, a heart of gold, very loyal, but had some deep mother wounds and father wounds that we all on this path typically have had to recover from. I mean, one wound or the other, but the difference is what are you doing with it? Because you can't just explode it on other people. It's your wound. Therefore, it's your responsibility to take ownership and heal. And that was the part that was missing, the ownership and the healing. So my body started to get really inflamed. And when he would come around me, I would notice that I would feel very constricted because I would have to like hold my light in. I couldn't be myself around him. Now, as soon as he would leave, I couldn't wait to get away from him. As soon as he would leave, I'd be like, yes. And, and I'd be like happy. And, and I'm like, wait a minute. So I started noticing that in this person's presence, I am constrained. I'm drained. I cannot be myself. He's not a safe person to share with not a bad guy, but he needs to be with someone that's also an atheist that's on his level that, um, that maybe they could like start on the same level and then heal and, and evolve and do all the wonderful things that make them happy. But our paths were so different and that's why the levels were different because I'm on a spiritual path. So I'm going to be in a huge vibrational difference than him. And we're not going to resonate because, you know, he wanted to do things like sit around and watch sports all day long, all weekend, just talk about it. That's all he wanted to do. Um, You know, go to rock old 80s band rock concerts. That's all he wanted to do. And all of those things are like incredibly boring. I wouldn't mind going to like an 80s concert here and there, but we just were completely different. And those things weren't illuminated until later. And that's the other thing about relationships take it slow, people. (laughs) I mean, there's many things that don't show up until later. And we all have those things. And it's not all bad. But when you dive in too quickly, you don't give the relationship time to cook and for those things to boil up that need to be clear to see if you can communicate to see if you can actually work through the things together. Now, sometimes life happens and things change and people change. Whatever's in you in a squeeze, in a stressful environment will come out of you. And that was the other thing that I noticed. Like in times of like stress, this person would like crumble. And I have been in a lifetime, this lifetime of lots of twists and turns and stress. So I do well. But I also have to do it alone. So I realized I wasn't in a partnership. And I'm sure you felt the same way because, again, the things that I'm into don't align with him. So I'm sure it was mutual. But I'm sharing with you as light worker to light worker that is your body talking to you? Because I'm telling you people, I started holding weight and I wasn't eating 
I was not eating any type of food that would justify the puffiness and the weight gain. And my body just felt so puffy. It was really hard to explain. And I went to hormone doctors and a thyroid doctor and we do those things. And it was just my body keeping score of, okay, so Susan doesn't listen to the intuition. So now it's going to go to the body. Let, let's, let's try to find every single way possible to communicate to her that this isn't going to work. And honestly, if you're listening to this, you already know the answer. You have to be okay with your decision. It's not going to be easy, but time doesn't make it easier. What happens with me is that if I wait too long, first it's like little whispers and then it becomes louder and louder. And then the universe will make it so incredibly miserable, so unbearably miserable that you have no choice to leave. It just keeps getting worse. (laughs) It will just keep getting worse. And a lot of times there's like ups and downs, ups and downs. What you'll notice is the downs are more frequent and they last more often. And again, it's okay to work through things, but we're talking about situations where the other person is not doing their work. And, you know, you need two people for balance. Like two, two people have to hold their weight. One can't constantly just hold more than the other person. And it is a huge topic and it is an important topic and honestly, if you haven't done codependent work and you you know, grew up in a codependent household where you develop these super strengths, where you're the one that's always helping and giving and you feel like you're over giving all the time and people just drain you and take from you, do some codependent work. Learn about that. Learn about your own triggers. I mean, I spent 15 years deep diving on myself, learning my own triggers. What's going on? What's the root of that issue? How can I resolve it? So, and I will say... My relationships since that relationship are, they're nothing like that. And none of my previous relationships before that one were anything like that. So that is a really good indicator that, you know, I've done a lot of healing work because that was a relationship unlike any I'd ever like had before. And it was like the most unbearable relationship. (laughs) Like I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it um, at the end. And so sometimes it gets there and I hope it doesn't have to get there for you. I hope that you can listen to this and say, all right, what are some things that I can do today to disconnect from anybody else's opinions or anybody else's thoughts? Even that person that you're in a relationship with their thoughts doesn't matter. Tune into yourself to hear what your intuition is telling you. What does your higher self think about this? Does it fulfill you? Are there more good times than bad times? Are, do you feel safe to share? Do you feel supported? Is this a person that you enjoy being around more consistently than you don't? You know, um, those are all things to look at. And you know the answer. You know the answer. Sometimes people will book readings to ask me stuff that they already know because they're looking for validation. But what's really funny is when they'll say, are they cheating on me? Because they're looking for reasons to leave because their own intuition to them isn't enough. It is enough. It is enough. And guess what? It is more courageous to leave than it is to stay. Most people stay in miserable relationships because they don't want to be alone. And that is the most loneliest position you could ever be in is being in the wrong relationship because you just want a warm body. And the warm body is the wrong one for you. You can have so much more if you just have the courage to follow your own intuition. So let's do a healing. You can uncross your arms and legs. I'm going to focus on bringing in your intuition and your strength, letting you tap into your intuition, your higher self, so that you can hear and know your answers and have the courage to act on it.
Okay, you can start coming back into your body. If anything I shared in the podcast today has triggered you or activated something in you or it doesn't resonate, just let it go. I'm just sharing ideas and my experience, what's worked for me, what I've seen, what I've studied. And we're all going to have different experiences and that is okay. One thing I won't do is argue with people or debate with people. I'm not going to do that. I don't do that on anyone else's channel and I'm not going to do it on mine. (laughs) I don't have the energy for it. So if it doesn't resonate, then just let it go. And I really pray and hope that you find what works for you because my whole point and purpose is to help inspire everyone to be the brightest light they can, the best version of themselves, help them to be happy and healthy and enlightened so we can make the world a better place. I want to wish you a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.